Hello and welcome to a reading vlog. It has been so long since I've done one of these and I just kind of wanted to preface a few things before we jump into it. I had a hard time deciding if I wanted this to be spoiler free or not and I kind of changed my mind halfway through. So the first half of this vlog where I talk about Six of Crows, that is spoiler free and Crooked Kingdom got more spoilery. So just be prepared for that. I would just recommend having read both of these before you watch this video unless you don't care and you don't care if you get spoiled. I also have reviews written on Goodreads for these if you're interested in my thoughts before you read them. But just so you know, you'd probably be safe with Six of Crows, but once I start reading Crooked Kingdom, beware of spoilers. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. Hello, I'm currently reading Six of Crows which is something that I have been meaning to do for years now. I did read the Grisha trilogy in 2019 and I read like some in-depth summaries of it again because I didn't want to have to reread it before I read this but just to kind of catch myself up on the world and everything. So yes, I started this last night. I am on page 111. And I'm liking it so far. I just need to get used to having so many characters. <laughs> I just haven't read a book like this in such a long time. I've been reading a lot of either YA contemporary or adult thrillers. Yeah, it's just taking some adjustment. Like, I feel like I'm reading it way slower because I'm having to, like, reread sections to, like, figure out the location of this or, you know, I don't know. It's just different, but I am really liking it so far. I really like... Jesper and Nina. I'm sure everyone watching this has either read it or heard of this book, but this is basically the duology that came after the Grisha trilogy, and it follows this group of spy assassin, badass people who are trying to pull off this heist. That's all I knew going into it and so far that's exactly what's happening. So <laughs> after I finish this I don't know if I'm gonna want to jump right into Crooked Kingdom or not. Um, I do have a a weird thing with series like at least this is just a duology but it's like I kind of like to take a break from the characters and read something in between but then at the same time I have such a horrible memory that I shouldn't be doing that because then I won't know anything that's happening. So yeah. Reading update. I only have one part left of Six of Crows. So I have like 60 pages left. And this book is just so fun. I'm kind of glad that I read the Grisha trilogy first, but at the same time, like you don't need to have done that. And I kind of like, I really like the info that that trilogy gave me. I don't think you really need to enjoy this so I'm kind of like I don't regret reading it but I'm really glad I didn't like reread it before I read Six of Crows because this is like so much better than the Grisha trilogy I don't know I just I love a good heist you know it's making me want to rewatch Ocean's 8 which is like one of my favorite like feel-good movies yeah I'm really excited to finish though I love Jesper and Kaz and those are probably my two favorite and then I also really like Nina. I just finished Six of Crows. What a wild ride. I really liked this overall. I really did. I think by the end of it I liked all the characters, all six of them, which is rare. My only complaint I guess, which isn't really a complaint, it's just like I kind of wish it had been done differently somehow but also I'm not a writer and I don't know how I would have done it any differently, but once you get to the main heist part, because the chapters are each in from someone else's perspective, we'd have like a chapter from Nina's perspective and then you'd get like a page and a half of like what she's doing at this certain time during the heist and then you get like six pages of like a flashback to her backstory and then it was like that with like every character's chapter for a while there 
And it just kind of slowed the pacing down of, like, the actual heist. Because it's like, oh, now we're learning about their backstory, like, 300 pages in during the heist. Like, I don't know. But I'm like, I don't know how else you would have done that. Because it's better than having, like, a big info dump every time a new character showed up, like, at the beginning of the book. But it was just kind of an odd timing for me. Because it, like, took me out of the heist. And there's already, like, six people going around doing different things. So I really didn't need to, like, be taken out of that. So that's kind of my only complaint. Other than that, the ending was crazy. What a cliffhanger. I wasn't expecting a big cliffhanger for some reason. And I can't, I can't figure out if I'm in the mood to start Crooked Kingdom right now. Or if I want to take a little bit of a break and go back to my thrillers or something. Just because this was, like, so much brain energy to read, like, a fantasy again that I don't know if I should just keep going because there is only other one book, obviously, in the duology. I feel like I should just keep going with it. But anyway, that's that. I'm very glad I finally read it. I am going to read Crooked Kingdom soon, if not next, and then I'll probably watch Shadow and Bone on... Netflix soon. I also really love how witty and snarky that book is. Like Kaz and Jesper especially are just very like witty and I like that. I think I'm probably gonna give it like four stars. I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break and then Heartstopper Volume 3 just came through on Libby for me. So I think I'm gonna read that and kind of cleanse my reading palette for a second. Actually briefly, you know what? I just barely started Crooked Kingdom, but I had the idea that I want to give my thoughts on the main characters as they stand right now, and then I'll see at the end of Crooked Kingdom if I still feel the same way about them. Let's start with Kaz. He, I definitely think I find most interesting maybe, just because I was like really invested in learning his backstory, all the stuff with his brother and everything and like why he wears gloves and all that kind of stuff. Like I kept waiting and waiting to get to that. And I love just like his vibe. But the thing about me for him, well, a lot of them actually, but especially him, the fact that he is 17 is very odd. Like he reads so much older not so much older, but like he reads like he's like at least like in his 20s. And so it's weird to me that he's a teenager, that he's the same as like he's the same age basically as the rest of them. I feel like he's a little bit older. He reads that way anyway. Inej, I thought I would like more. I went into Six of Crows like literally knowing absolutely nothing. Thankfully, I haven't been spoiled for anything. I've just seen like random cast photos from the show and stuff like that of like characters from this but I really had no idea who she was I just kept hearing the character name and I was like I'm probably gonna like her but I do think I like Nina more Nina is such a badass I am gonna say a spoiler here so whatever image I put up on the screen right now once that goes away I'll be done talking about the spoiler so meet this if you don't want to get spoiled but when Nina takes the freaking drug even though she knows that it means that she'll get super addicted or she'll have like horrible withdrawals that can kill her the fact that she recognizes that she's like the only one who can get them out of that situation and so she takes it knowing what she's getting herself into and then she fucking decimates everyone that was badass i have so much respect for her yeah plus i mean she's the only gresha I mean, Jesper's a Grisha, but, like, she's the, like, she's trained, like, she uses her powers a lot, and I don't know, she's just really cool, so, anyway. And then we have Jesper. Jesper, I think he's so witty and so funny and so snarky, and I really like him for that. I just feel like Six of Crows, at least, was a lot more about Kaz and Inej and Nina and Mateus, and... Jesper and Wylan were kind of more behind the scenes. So I'm hoping maybe in Crooked Kingdom we get more of of those two. But I really liked him. He kind of gave me like Han Solo vibes. He's good with guns. He's really snarky. 
that kind of thing. And then Wylan, I mean, I like that he came through. He's interesting, and I feel like, I mean, already, we've already had a chapter from him in Crooked Kingdom. Like, I'm really excited to get to know him more because we really didn't get to know him that much, but I still liked him the little we got to know. Mateus, I didn't like at the beginning. Like, when he first got introduced for a while, I just, like, his chapters, I was just like, okay. But by the end of it, I was like, you know what? He deserves, he has a right to be angry. He was literally raised to think that Grisha are bad and evil and he's had such a hard life and like he was in prison so like we get it um I don't know why I judge him so much <laughs> but he really grew on me he's definitely not my favorite but I really like him and I really I mean I really like all of them I would say right now I still really like Kaz I feel like that's really basic but I think Kaz is my first favorite and Nina's my second favorite, and then maybe Jesper's my third. So we'll see if that changes, but I thought it'd be cool to, to compare um, how I feel about them after Six of Crows and then after Crooked Kingdom. Okay, bye. So as you can see, I really love Six of Crows. So I think if you haven't read these books up until right now, I would click away from this video because I do like Editing Emma wanted to interject a little bit of Six of Crows spoiler. Kaz reminds me of like a Tim Burton character in a good way, but he has just such like a presence and a vibe to him that I just love so much. His backstory with his brother Jordy is so sad and I love the way that it's slowly revealed through here why he wears gloves and like he, when they go in that um, car to go to the ice court and he's like touching, he's like touching p other people and like gets freaked out by that and passes out. Like, I don't know. I just really love like a very, a character with a lot of like bravery and bravado who has like this inner turmoil that you wouldn't necessarily know about. It was very good. I really honestly, looking back, I love everybody in this except for Matthias. All right, it's official. I'm starting Crooked Kingdom. I, part of me kind of wants to take a break from the series to be honest, but then part of me's like, every time I've done that in the past, I have just simply not finished it. <laughs> so, or like so much time will go by combined with my poor memory that I'll have to reread Six of Crows before I read Crooked Kingdom because I'll forget who everybody is. And I do not want to have to do that. So we're going to keep on trucking. I am excited and I am excited to read them back to back, but it's just after this, I think I'm going to take like a pretty big break from fantasy for a while. But let's just, let's just jump right on in. This is unexpectedly a Six of Crows duology reading vlog apparently. One thing I'm really liking about about this duology is how atmospheric it is like the description of just like all the places they visit the clothing that they wear and like all the stuff in the ice court I just I feel like I pictured it so vividly without it feeling like there was so much unnecessary description if that makes sense like some books it's like here's 20 what feels like 20 pages of like what this room looks like and then it's like for what but this really just like seamlessly like without slowing the pace down like has such this like vibe even like in the first three pages of crooked kingdom i'm like this bar that this man is in like i feel like i'm there and i really really like that so just wanted to say that. All right, it is the next day. It is time for a reading update. I don't know what 
this hair is doing, but anyways, I am on page 171, so I'm about almost a third of the way through Crooked Kingdom, and I think I'm liking it better than Six of Crows. Um, I think just because we're not getting bogged down with everyone's backstory, because we already know it. And so it can kind of just pick up from where Six of Crows left off. And there's already, like, so much has been accomplished already. Like, the cliffhanger, the majority of the cliffhanger at the end of Six of Crows has already been... What's the word? Like, the problem has been fixed already. But there's so much of the book left, and I'm just like, there's just going to be so many problems. Like, <laughs> there has to be. And I, I think someone dies in this. I don't know who it is, and I can thank my bad memory for that, because I know I've read, like, just existing on book Twitter for the last, like, three years. Like, I've read plenty of spoilers for the series, and I do not remember a single one of them. But I do think someone dies in this. I don't know who. Because when I read it at the time, when I read the spoiler at the time, like, the names meant nothing to me, so I didn't remember. But not looking forward to that. I don't know who it is. And I'm scared. But it's, it's a good time so far. And I'm proud of myself because I'm actually reading it physically. I've been reading a lot of stuff digitally recently. And I actually read most of Six of Crows digitally because the ebook came in through Libby. But this, the ebook for this is like still, f like my hold, I'm like 20 something in line for it. So I was forced to read this physically and it was honestly a struggle at the beginning, but I'm finally into it. The font's just really tiny and I don't know, I've been like so into digital like ebooks right now and I never thought I'd be that person. So that's a thing. I'll check in with you guys tomorrow when I finish the next, like, third of the book. So I already made a clip saying exactly what I'm about to re-say, but I'm going to re-say it because I was holding the camera out and my hand is, like, so shaky that, no. So here's the update. This is probably going to be a more concise version. <laughs> I am halfway through. I just finished part three out of six. And I am not vibing it as nearly as much as Six of Crows. And I've heard, I think almost everyone prefers Six of Crows, but like, I really prefer it. Like this is like a three star right now. And I'm really hoping it'll work its way up to a four in the second half. I mean, it has potential. I definitely don't think it's gonna drop lower than a three, but like Six of Crows, I was surprised because I haven't read, oh hello Baby Yoda, I haven't read a fantasy in so long that I was surprised that I could like sit down for three hours and read Six of Crows, but I can't really do that with this. Anyway, my other thing is I just feel like the stakes are so much lower in this book because there's not like one overarching heist that they're doing like they're doing a bunch of little things and i feel like those little things are less developed and less explored because they're little but then the action that takes place there i f i feel like i'm always confused of like what's going on like in the action scenes like i don't feel like i'm in it i feel like i'm like rereading parts of it trying to figure out who's doing what and where and then the other thing <laughs> which I think is just me, but I'm getting a little bit annoyed with Kaz. Like I'm tired of him revealing at the last second that he planned on this to happen, that everyone else thought was a surprise or thought that was like unexpected. Like we get that he's 10 steps ahead of everybody, but it's like now at the point where like something unexpected will happen. And I'm like, Kaz planned for that to happen. And then sure enough, three chapters later, when they all come back together, Kaz like reveals that he planned for that to happen. And I'm like, I get it. But 
that only happened a couple times in Six of Crows because it was one big heist. But the fact that there's multiple in here, he's done it so much in in the first half that I'm just like, stop. Like, it's losing its impact. So his character is getting a little bit annoying for me, which I'm really sad about. Like, I still like him, but it's just getting a little bit redundant at this point. So I don't know. I'm hoping the second half will pick up. I do like that we're getting more Jesper and Wylan. Still don't know who's gonna die in this. I'm gonna place my bets and guess that it's either Jesper or Wylan just because we're learning so much about them now that then like they'll die and it'll be more impactful because it's like we just learned about whichever one of them. So yeah, that's my guess. But I don't know. But that is part of it because I was saying like I didn't know who, like I know someone dies in this but I don't know who. I have a vague notion like the name that I read on a tweet three years ago where someone was talking like spoiled it but I don't remember. I think it was a male name that's why I'm saying Jesper Wylan. I, I would be surprised if it's Kaz because he's kind of like the leader but I do vaguely remember it being a male name. Or maybe it's Mateus. I'd be fine if he died, honestly. He's like my least favorite. But <laughs> anyways, wow. I don't know. We'll see. But that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. So I'm going to read some more right now. I'm planning on finishing this by tomorrow night. Just because I kind of want to like move on to other things. I'll keep you posted. Hello. So I have done a decent chunk of reading since I updated yesterday. I'm now on part six. I have one part left, about 90 pages to go. Still, it's still a solid three stars. I'm really not as into it as I was with Six of Crows. It's just so political and like the main, what I think is going to be the main like ending thing. Maybe not. There's still 90 pages, but a big part of it has been um, the auction. That's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to get into spoilers right now, but, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different countries involved with that, and so it's just, I don't know, it's just that so many people are name dropped, and, like, there's just been so many conversations with, like, middle-aged men who are greedy, and I'm just like, okay, like... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not as interested in the plot, I think, of this book. The basic plot of Six of Crows to me was like so much more captivating than this is. But there have been some like smaller scenes within this book that are like keeping me interested enough. I really love basically everything with Wylan. A scene with Wylan and a character from Shadow and Bone. There's also another character from Shadow and Bone that I didn't realize was in this and I loved him. I will say I'm very into, like I like Kaz and Inej and I like Jesper and Wylan, but I am kind of annoyed that like everyone has to have a romantic interest. Like everyone in that group has to be paired up with someone else from that group. I don't know. But the only one, like I said, that actually bothers me is Nina and Matthias. I realized it's pronounced Matthias because there's literally a pronunciation guide in the back of the book that I did not know about. But she's just way too good for him. So I'm kind of hoping that he's the one that's gonna die because I've gotten really attached to Wylan now and I don't want it to be Wylan, but Matthias is expendable to me, honestly. He's my least favorite. <laughs> so wow. we'll see only got 90 pages left, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that.
finished it. I really like the way that it ended, but like parts of it were so boring. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's like a three and a half out of five stars. It was a very satisfying conclusion, like so satisfying. So I really appreciate that. And not gonna lie, it does make me excited for King of Scars. I think I am going to process a little bit and then come back with some spoilery thoughts. Okay, it's the next day. Finished Crooked Kingdom last night. Had a nice long chat with one of my friends who absolutely loves this duology. So let's just dive in. So first of all, the fact that it was Matthias who died, I'm very happy about that. Like, wow. I'm not happy about it, but I'm glad it was him over some other people because he was kind of the one I least cared about. I will say, because I know I gave my ranking for kind of of everyone at the end of Six of Crows. So my, my ranking for Crooked Kingdom, or I guess overall, my favorite is Wylan. Wylan, he's just such like a sweetheart and his backstory is so sad. And I don't know, I just, I have really connected with Wylan. I just love his relationship with Jesper and <laughs> the scene where Jesper kisses Kuei and, and he thinks that it's Wylan. I was so shook. Because for a second, I like believed it. And I was like, oh my God, like they kissed. And then two seconds later, Wylan's in the doorway. Like, um, that, that got me. What was interesting about this one is Kaz kind of got on my nerves. I think I just got tired of like the whole, the repetition of it. Like Six of Crows, it's like, you're just learning about them. And it's like, it worked really well to have Kaz be one step ahead of everybody and like something that would go wrong in the heist that he didn't tell everyone about and they'd think that it was something that went wrong by accident and then they were able to overcome it then when they debriefed he would be like oh i meant for that to happen i just didn't tell you like that worked really well and it is cool and i understand like that's his whole thing like that's kaz but i got kind of annoyed with it in Crooked Kingdom where he kind of just felt like a parody of himself almost where I was like I just assumed that anything unexpected that happened he already knew about and like 99% of the time that was true and so it got kind of old for me because I felt like I started like predicting that and I kind of like just once wanted to have something go wrong that he and like him admit it to the rest of the group that like he didn't plan for that. So he kind of dropped down on my list. So I honestly think like um, Wyland's top, my favorite, and then probably Nina and then Inej. Cause I gave Six of Crows a four. I gave Crooked Kingdom a 3.5. I feel like the stakes just felt a lot lower because this entire book took place in Ketterdam. And so it wasn't so much like a bunch of different like a a bunch of different people from a bunch of different places would be affected by a lot of the stuff that was going on in here it was very like local which made the stakes a little bit lower and then why were there two men named Pekka Rollins and Per Haskell who both had p names who I both kept getting confused of which one was the boss of Kaz and which one was like the evil guy but then it's like Jan Van Eck and the two Ps like were working together. So I was like, they literally might as well just be the same person. Like, I don't know. There was just a lot of like middle-aged greedy men within Ketterdam, like a lot of discussions with them in this book. And I would have preferred like, like I missed like, let's go break Matthias out of Hellgate. Let's like, Inej is gonna climb up this incinerator shaft like really cool scenes from Six of Crows like nothing to me really had the same stakes as that but there were some scenes like so I was bored for probably a third of this book but there were some scenes that really redeemed it for me the whole silo thing like Inej doing the tightrope walking between the silos I thought was really cool her meeting that other assassin that was like almost better than she was I I would have liked more time with that other girl, but I mean, she died. I really liked the scene where Jesper is kind of like guiding Zoya. Is it Zoya who's doing it? Or Genya? One of the two. 
I'm too lazy to check, to like make Wyland look like himself again because I love Jesper and Wyland. And I really love that we find out that Jesper was using his Grisha power the whole time in the sense of that's why he never misses with when he shoots somebody. And I love that. I love that he managed to hit the button on Kuei's shirt from like around a corner. I don't know. I, I really love that aspect of it. And then at the end, I thought the ending was great. I love the way that it kind of all our, our main dregs, like all the members got their their plot lines like resolved. I was really, really satisfied with that. I mean, I can't complain. So while there were some slow parts in this, like in a lot of ways, I do like it as much as Six of Crows. I just think like what I liked about like one of them versus the other, I like them for very different reasons. And so I think that's why it's kind of almost really difficult to compare them together, even though they are part of the same series. But what a time. I'm so glad I finally read these. I'm so glad I can look at fan art now and like understand it because there's so much cool fan art for this series. And I really did love all of our main characters. Even the ones that I didn't love as much, I still really liked. And I feel like that's rare for a series when they have so many main characters and, and so many characters who get their own chapter perspectives. I feel like it's really common for me to be annoyed with like at least one of them. But I was never that annoyed with any of them. That's my vlog. I feel like I could ramble on forever about this. So I'm just gonna stop here. I would love to have some chats in the comments with you. Let me know like some of your favorite scenes or some of your favorite characters so we can keep the conversation going. Hopefully this vlog wasn't too all over the place. Like I said, I couldn't decide if I wanted this to be spoiler free or not, or it was like all over the place and it was such a last minute decision to have a vlog dedicated just to this. So sorry about that, <laughs> but I hope you are all having a great day or night and I will talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.